In this video, we're going to be discussing one of Cat's most popular engines, the C7. Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to be discussing the Cat C7 engine which is one of the more popular cat engines that are around in smaller trucks, RVs, and a lot of buses as well. Uh, before we get started in this video, I wanted to thank Ricardo and Daniel for their donations to adeptape at yahoo.com on PayPal. And the format of the this video is going to be, first we're gonna go a little walk around. I'm gonna show you where the sensors are, component identification on your C7 engine. Then we're gonna be discussing facts about the C7, um, just information you need to know on it, maintenance intervals, and then we're going to get into common failures and problems with the C7. Okay, hope you enjoy the video. So starting on the intake side of a C7 here, I'm going to go to the back, and on the back of the head, on the left side of the screen there, let me see if I can show you, yeah, right there. That is your fuel pressure regulator. If you're getting fuel pressure codes and you've changed your filters, that's a good idea to change, even though it is fairly inaccessible. It's fairly cheap. It's only around $30, and it's a leading cause of fuel pressure problems. If you have a higher horsepower C7, that is your wastegate regulator, which is electronically controlled. We have your boost pressure sensor there. Get my camera resituated. On the valve cover base right there, you have your atmospheric pressure sensor. You have your intake air temp sensor. Going below the intake manifold here. Okay, you have your ECM. You have your crankcase breather. You have your coolant temp sensor right there on the block, just below the head. You have your fuel line in and outlet to the transfer pump, which is on the back of the Huey pump. We have the Huey pump itself. We have the injection actuation pressure sensor. We have the high pressure feed rail from the Huey pump to the head, and we have the oil line that goes from the block to feed and supply the Huey pump. And you can see the air compressor in the bottom left hand corner, and this is the line feeding the oil to the Huey pump there. And this line right there, that is a coolant supply line to the air compressor. On this side, that's your coolant uh, line outlet line from the air compressor. Behind the air compressor, on the front structure, are your timing sensors. There's two of them. They're right next to each other. Very difficult to get to if you have an air compressor. But there they are. If you're having timing issues, that's where they are at. Uh, damper, and onto the other side. So we have your water pump. C7 uses a belt-driven water pump. And it sits right there. Have your alternator, of course, uh, AC compressor, your oil filter, oil, and oil filter housing, your thermostat housing. C7 uses two thermostats, which can be located right under there. This is the other side of the air compressor coolant supply line. Exhaust manifold, turbocharger. C7s are single turbo only. And we have your wastegate right there. So that's where you can find your wastegate if you're having problems with that. And then your oil filter housing and your oil cooler is behind the oil filter housing. Now these are the lifters. That is a good lifter. And here you have a failed lifter. This is a somewhat cause, um, common cause of failure on the C7s. It can damage the push rods. And that is a normal looking push rod there on the right. And here's your overhead. You have your injectors, Huey injectors, which can be removed without removing the valve train you have your exhaust and intake intakes the shorter one exhaust is the longer one it's a dual valve setup on the intake and a single valve on the exhaust okay so let's talk about the c7 its design features and maintenance intervals before we talk about common problems with the c7 so the c7 is a 7.2 liter cat engine it is the smallest CAT engine that CAT actually makes. There are smaller engines with CAT stickers on them in excavators and things like that, but those are actually Perkins. So if you've heard of the C4.4 or maybe a, like a 3056, something like that, 
those are Perkins Maid's products. Um, C7 is the smallest cat engine. It's also the only cat engine really in the trucks, unless you're talking like a 3208, which is fairly old, that didn't have replaceable liners. These were parent bore, meaning that you could not pull the piston and liner out and replace it. You actually had to either machine the block or get a new block when you're doing a rebuild. Um, now this engine is also a Huey system. If you've seen the C9 video, I discussed the Huey system. And the Huey system uses a high pressure oil pump to supply pressure to the fuel injectors. And that's what fires the injectors. I have a few videos talking about how to troubleshoot and how the Huey system works in more detail. If you're inquisitive as to that, I recommend watching those videos. The C7 engine is also very simple. There's practically no emissions related items on a C7. Now this is referring to the KAL, SAP, and WAX serial numbers. If you have a C7S serial number, C7, that is a completely different animal. That was the last version of the C7 to be made with the trucks, and that had an art head system. It had an EGR system that was called CGI. It had a high pressure common rail system. It had an art head, it had a DPF. It was a lot more complicated system than the older C7s, the ones we'll be discussing in this video. Uh, these engines are very popular. Uh, lots of school buses had these, lots of RVs had these, uh, smaller delivery trucks. The horsepower ranges from 190 horsepower up to 350 horsepower. Torque ranges from 520 foot-pounds of torque up to 860 foot-pounds of torque. The base for this engine was the 3126, which is extremely similar to the C7. Basically, they changed some of the Huey system and the sensors, and then it became the C7. And the 3126 was based on the 3116, which was a much different style engine that did not use a Huey system. So that is basically most of the features you need to know about the, uh, the C7 engine. Um, other features you might need to know, it's a pushrod engine, single cam, um, it runs two intake valves, a single exhaust valve, a uh, single turbo, it can have a dumb wastegate, meaning that it just picks up air off of the inlet housing of the turbo. On the higher horsepower versions, it had a smart wastegate, which was ECM controlled from the intake manifold. Now let's talk about the maintenance intervals for your C7. So CAT has two different recommendations for your C7 engine as far as oil changes go. And on an oil change, you're going to want to change your oil, your oil filter, and your fuel filters. There's a deep and a shallow sump C7. So if you're running with the about 5-gallon pan, there was about a 5-gallon pan and about a 7-gallon pan. That The 7-gallon pan is known as the deep sump. The 5-gallon pan is known as the shallow sump. CAT's recommendation is every... 11,000 miles or six months if you have the shallow sump, and it's 15,000 miles or six months with the deep sump. My personal recommendation, however, since this is a Huey system and the system relies on clean oil to be filtered through the Huey pump and to the injectors, or else it can take out the injectors or the Huey pump, I would recommend probably about a 7,500 mile oil change on these systems. And that will get into kind of the common failures, so I don't want to get too deep into that. But as a personal recommendation, I would say, you know, do your oil changes. Most people don't do them every six months, especially in an RV application. I'd say make sure they get done at least once a year. And I would say do them in less mileage than CAT recommends. I would say, like I said, about 7,500 miles. Now, what about overheads? Uh, overheads are extremely simple on C7s. Uh, it's 15 thousandths intake, 25 thousandths exhaust, and I have a video on how to do C7 overhead as well. Um, they're very simple to do, and CAT's recommendation is every two years or 100,000 miles after the initial uh, 11,000 mile service one. But I don't think there's any new C7s out there. So unless you've had a recent rebuild or something, you don't really need to worry about getting an overhead done. Um, after the initial service until 100,000 miles or two years. 
So let's talk about common failures of the C7. The C7 is a very simple engine, does not have a lot of um, bottom end failures. Uh, you don't see, um, you don't see really like bearing damage. Um, the cranks are pretty indestructible. You don't see a lot of cylinder damage, piston damage, anything like that. The main causes of damage on a C7 is the Huey system itself. And that system is extremely expensive. Cat makes a kit called a Huey kit, which is a Huey pump and all six new injectors. And that kit runs in the three to four thousand dollar range, depending on where you buy it. And that is without labor. So expect to spend another, you know, depending on what shops quoting it and what application, you could be spending, let's say, another eight to twelve hours, maybe eight to sixteen hours, depending on application in addition to the parts cost in labor cost for a Huey kit. And what is what does that consist of? So major cause of failure for this Huey system is uh, dirty oil can do it, but the Huey pump itself can fail. The Huey pump, when it fails, it can throw metal and debris into the Huey rail, which is in the head, which will then damage the injectors. And then you're replacing injectors and the Huey pump. Now, sometimes caught early, you can just change the pump and it won't damage the injectors and you can clear the rail out. The injectors are fairly expensive. They're about five to $600 each. Um, you know, you really need to maintain your oil system a lot on these Huey systems. You don't want, you know, if you start noticing fuel in your oil or coolant in your oil, you want to get that rectified as soon as possible. Other potential problems with the C7. The other major cause of failure in the C7 is the rocker arm assemblies. They bolt to the side covers on the side of the engine and they use a copperish bronze um, bushing to hold the roller on for the bearing for the lifter that rides on the camshaft. And that bearing, the bronze copper bearing, can fail. And while not common, it is probably the second leading cause of, let's say, a weak cylinder or something on your Huey or on your C7. And when that fails, it can damage the cam. It usually does damage the cam. It can throw a push rod, uh, potentially damage valves, but usually it damages the cam and damages the roller on your lifter. And then you're going to have a dead cylinder or a weak cylinder. And those are the biggest um, failures with the C7s, um, you know, there are the typical normal failures, you know, like low fuel pressure caused by the transfer pump, uh, water pump leaks, things like that. But that's, that's fairly standard um, on pretty much all engines. But biggest problems with the Huey systems, um, with the C7 is the Huey system, and then the, uh, the lifter design. Now, uh, other things that can go wrong with these oil leaks. Um, front structure can leak. There's no gasket on the front structure. It's actually a, uh, a sealant that's used. And over time, it can develop leaks. And it's somewhat of a major repair. Um, the oil pumps, also the idler gear can fail. Um, that's not super common. But if you ever have the oil pan off, it's a good idea to check the idler on your oil pump to make sure that the bearing has not failed on that. As you could, that could cause low oil pressure if your oil pump fails. What else? Uh, side covers can leak. Um, those are really the main oil leak problems with the C7. It's a fairly um, non leaky engine, I would say, for the most part. And overall, very simple engine, very easy to fix for the most part. No specialty tooling is needed for the injector height, uh, timing of the engine, anything. Um, the UE pump, nothing needs timed. Um, except for the camshaft. So it, it's really a simple engine. Um, little inline six, good for RVs, things like that. And uh, that is pretty much all the information that you need to know about your C7. All right, thank you for watching the video.